Karen. We've all heard, seen, and read them. The infomercials on TV that want us to buy things, the ads in the magazines that want us to help find missing people, and even the charities that we, things that we get in the mail that want us to help find missing people, or, excuse me, that want us to donate. But have any of you actually tried to participate or maybe change something or do something good for the world when asked? The three speakers I'm going to talk about today are abolitionist William Wilberforce, former President Jimmy Carter, and baseball legend Lou Gehrig. These individuals have all in some way or another called their audiences to action. William Wilberforce was a abolitionist and he delivered his abolition speech on May 12, 1789. And according to a book by John Piper titled Amazing Grace in the Life of William Wilberforce, he was a parliamentary leader of Great Britain. And in his speech, he said it before the House of Commons and he really wanted to say and tell them that abolition, er, slavery is wrong and that abolition needs to be enforced and slavery just needs to be abolished altogether. What I noticed about this speech is that the passion that's shown from it, he gives a lot of examples and details, vivid imagery of the treatment of the slaves when they were being transported across the Atlantic Ocean. And he also gives statistics of their deaths, so he seems very credible in that aspect. Um, there was a part in the, in the speech where he talks about a man named Robert Norris who was also testifying at the time about the treatment of slaves and he was saying all these things that the, the slaves are being treated very well, they're getting nice accommodations, they're being fed, they're singing and dancing, which is a load of baloney. <laughs> um, this quote that he states here is that the song and the dance says Mr. Norris are promoted. The truth is that for the sake of exercise, these slaves, loaded with chains, oppressed with disease and wretchedness, are forced to dance by the terror of the lash and sometimes by the actual use of it. So he really proved that Mr. Norris guy wrong. After he said this speech, it took him 26 years to finally get the word out and get the Slave Trade Act of 1807 passed, and I believe that he was kind of the seed to end slavery in the U.S. because he was so he was so passionate and very driven to end slavery, and after the Slave Trade Act was passed, other things started getting passed, and then that kind of influenced the U.S. to eventually create the 13th Amendment. And I don't think uh, many of us would be here without the efforts of William Wilberforce. Now let's move forward to 1979 when Jimmy Carter delivered his A Crisis of Confidence speech. During this time, there was a big problem with our oil, mainly due to the Arab oil embargo of 1973 and the Iranian Revolution of 1979. He talks about the need to not rely so much on foreign oils and <coughs> to start using more renewable energy. What I really liked about his speech was that he says the word us 23 times, we 86 times, and our 103 times. So to me, it said, it's not really about you, it's not about me, it's not about him. It's about all of us as a nation coming together as brothers and sisters. A quote that I liked was when he said, I will do my best, but I will not do it alone. Let your voice be heard. Whenever you have a chance, say something good about your country. With God's help and for the sake of our nation, it is time for us to join hands in America. Let us commit ourselves together to a rebirth of the American spirit, working together with our common faith we cannot fail. So that's kind of how he calls to action when he tells his audience to stand up for what's right and help fight these problems that our country is facing. Finally, I'm going to talk about Lou Gehrig and his farewell to baseball speech. We all know that he got the disease ALS, which is amyotrophic lateral cirrhosis. And in the speech, I noticed that he used a lot of anaphora, which is the repeating of sequence of words at the beginning. And 
he uses a lot of repetition. For example, he says, when you have a wonderful mother-in-law who takes sides with you and squabbles with her own daughter, that's something. When you have a father and a mother who work all their lives so you can have an education and build your body, it's a blessing. When you have a wife who has been a tower of strength and shown more courage than you dreamed existed, that's the finest I know. So, although he doesn't really say to his audience what his kind of call to action is, I kind of took it indirectly, and I thought, <coughs> you know, he's, he has this condition now, but in, throughout his speech, he's saying that he's the luckiest guy. And I believe he's sort of telling his audience indirectly that no matter what hardships you face or the pain you experience or whatever, just remember the, the great experiences that you have had and the people who love you and to keep, on for, to keep moving forward and to keep your head up. So in closing, I've shared three speeches, the first from abolitionist William Wilberforce, the second from former President Jimmy Carter, and the third from baseball legend Lou Gehrig. From these speeches, if you take a hint from them today, who knows what you'll achieve tomorrow.